Welcome back once again to howtocookgreatfood.com. If you haven't already, please click that button and subscribe to our channel. On the menu today, and as you can see right here, we've got a fantastic, I mean, it's really, really delicious. We've got a veggie loaf, vegan. There's no egg in there, there's no dairy product in there. Pretty sure it's gluten free as well. We're using oats and stuff like that in it. We've got beans. I've taken this on a kind of Italian kind of journey, but again, you can go in any direction you like. You can go Thai, Indian, you know, whatever you want with the flavors. Pretty, pretty simple, really healthy. Let's go and do it. Okay, let's get started on this vegan loaf. Here, I've got some beans. I'm using three types of beans today. Chickpeas, a white bean, and a red bean, kidney bean. About equal amounts. Now you can use any type of bean you, you like. You can use a pinto, you can use lentils. That's your choice. I'm also going to add some nuts to this today. I've got a few cashew nuts there and I've got some peanuts. The other thing that's going to bind this together, because this is kind of what's going to be the meat, if you know what I mean, is I'm going to be using some oats, just some kind of just white oats. What we need to do is we need to get this, 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 and these nuts into a machine and crush them up. You can do it by hand if you want, but I'm going to use my food processor. So eventually they look like this. So as you can see, I just popped them in my food processor just for a few seconds. We've got a nice kind of chunky, it's all chopped, but a bit chunky. With our different types of beans. And there's our nuts. So what we've got here, along with our oats, is the body of the bake that we're gonna make. This is kind of the, the, the you know the, the backbone of it really. The next thing to do is to sort our flavours out. So let's go and do that. So today, on this recipe, as you can see right in front of you there, I've got some onions. Now again, I'm gonna put them in my food processor and cut them nice and small. Do it by hand again if you want. Make them nice and small because we want it to kind of be a fairly smooth, you know what I mean? A kind of consistent kind of, you know, big chunks of onions in there. I'm gonna use a bit of sweet corn. I've got some grated carrot. I've got some spinach there, some chopped cooked spinach, and I've got some tomatoes. Again, we can chop them up in the machine. So everything's nice and small. Now, regarding where we're gonna go with actual flavor, it's up to you. We can make a Thai version of this, an Italian version of this, an Indian version of this. It just goes on and on. So I think today I'm gonna to use some garlic and some more kind of Italian type spices like basil, oregano, maybe a touch of rosemary but you can take it in any direction you want. Again, this is what I'm using today. I do think you're gonna need onions, well, for sure you're gonna need onions, but you don't particularly need carrots or tomatoes or spinach. You can put in other veg, you can put in some zucchini, some celery, some beets. I mean, it's entirely up to you. As when we were looking at the body of the base, I'm using three types of beans, but there's hundreds of types of beans, so they're the combinations. So. Thus far, we've got our oats, our nuts, and our beans ready. We've now got our veggies, and we've made a decision on which direction we're gonna go in the world regarding flavor. Let's move on. Here we are. You can see that I've chopped those tomatoes in my food processor, and I've done the same with the onions. I've also just chopped a little bit of garlic. Okay, we're all prepared. Let's get to the cooker. Okay, let's get started. I've got, starting off here, I've got a pan. You're gonna need a fairly decent sized pan. I've got some quality olive oil in there. Use any oil you like, it's up to you. We're gonna start by dropping in some of our onions. In they go. Some chopped garlic. I'm gonna put a touch of salt in. I'm going to go in with some black pepper. Then I'm going to add here, I've got a little bit of dried marjoram, a little bit of sage, a couple of nice pinches of oregano or oregano, and here's some dried Basil. Basil. So, 
We've now determined that we're going to kind of go on a Mediterranean, Italian type journey with what we're using here. But if you wanted, like I say, you could make a Thai one now. You could be putting ginger in here, some uh, lime leaves, or go for a curry kind of thing. Entirely up to you which direction you go in. As you can see, we're going a little bit Italian-ish. So, we want a kind of medium heat. Let's just cook these for like two to three minutes, give them a nice little stir every now and then. They're cooking beautifully. At this point, I'm gonna add my grated carrot. You just need to add the vegetables that take the longest to cook. So, for example, if you had some grated beets or potato or celery, you'd put that in now. If you've got mushrooms and spinach and things like that, you put it in later. So again, only two or three minutes on a kind of medium to high sheet above a medium. Let's saute these in there and get all those flavors happening. At this stage now, I'm gonna add my spinach, which is already cooked, it's like a cooked chopped spinach. I'm gonna add in that sweet corn. And again, we're gonna throw this in the pan. Get it all mixed nicely. And let's again, let's cook this now for about, we're kind of just stir frying it really, for about another four minutes. Keep stirring it all the time. At this stage, I'm going to add this Worcester sauce. Now I'm going to tell you two things about Worcester sauce. The first thing is it's called Worcester. You pronounce it Worcester. I hear a lot of you American guys like Wiltshire, Chichester. I don't know what you're saying. You pronounce it Worcester. That's it, Worcester sauce. The second thing is most Worcester sauce is not vegan. That was a vegan type of Worcester sauce. So be careful because it has a fish in it. It's got anchovies in it, the regular one. So check that out. And if you don't want to use uh, Worcester sauce, then you can maybe just put a touch of soy sauce in here if you want to. Now the last thing, we're gonna add our fresh tomatoes that we stuck in the food processor. Now I've seen quite a few recipes for loaves like this, where it's like powdered garlic and powdered this and powdered that and the stuff's not cooked and quite frankly it'll just be, I think it'll be horrible. Like we've really got a lovely base here. You know, we've got all that fresh garlic in there, we've cooked our onions down. You know, it's, it makes a big difference I think. And this looks quite wet at the moment. You kind of maybe thinking, we're gonna, you're gonna bake that? Yeah, because we're gonna cook this for a few minutes, maybe another four to five minutes. And then of course, we're gonna add our body, which is our oats, beans, and nuts. And that's what's gonna turn it actually into the loaf. So like I say, four to five minutes on a medium heat. Give it a stir every now and then. Okay, off goes the heat on that. Let's get over to our mixing bowl. So, here's a nice large mixing bowl. As you can see, I've got um, crushed nuts in there and the three types of pulses that I'm using today. I haven't put the oats in yet. I'll tell you why. Let's give these a mix first of all. Now, if you wanted, because we've gonna kind of gone down a Italian route today, we could have put some or we still could maybe put some black olives or green olives into this mix. And if you've got any fresh herbs, like fresh basil, fresh mint, fresh parsley, throw that in right now, that, that, I mean, that'd just be great. So we've got a nice little mixture there. The reason I haven't put them in yet is because this is what's gonna determine, do we need all of this or do we need less of it? The next thing now, let's get that. All our lovely veggies still really hot, let's get them in there. Now, give this a nice mix. So 
So we've got the body there of the beans and all those fantastic flavours from our vegetables. And it's now you can see that uh, it's still wet. So what we're going to do now is slowly get some oats in there. And the reason I'm not using bread, for you guys that are not that familiar with being vegan, is bread's got dairy products in it. Well, most bread has. You know, it's got eggs in it and stuff like that, and milk. So, it's looking pretty good. I'm actually going to add the rest of that. So it's about equal parts. you kind of got to feel your way into this and see how it is. This is looking quite good to me. Now what I want to do is I just want to let that rest for about five or six minutes for two reasons. One, I need to handle it when it's really hot. And the second reason being that those oats will kind of soak up a bit of that moisture now. And then we can take another look at it. See you in five. Okay, here we go. That's cooled down a little bit. I might actually touch it now. I've tasted it. It's got a little bite now. That. Really, really tasty. I mean, really tasty. Just to let you know, I'm not vegan, but that is really, really good. So, the next thing, get yourself a container. I've got this kind of Pyrex or ovenware dish, which I've just I don't know if you can see that or not. I've lightly just greased that with a little bit of olive oil. What we're going to do is we're going to load that up in there flat. And it's going to go in the oven. Let me do that. So there you go. As you can see, I've filled our dish up. I'm going to sort of press it down a little bit, make it kind of a bit firm. If you want, you can put some sort of ridges in it by doing that with a spoon or with a fork. Now I'm going to put that in my oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. There's no point in me telling you the gas mark or the heat because every oven is different. So you want a kind of above medium heat on your oven, middle shelf, preheated, get that in. That's gonna be in my oven 30 minutes, 35 minutes, like I say, absolutely delicious. Now, look at that, I've got loads of this left. But am I worried? Not at all. I'm happy. Because what we can do is we can grab some of this in a ball. We can shape them out into burgers like that. There you go. Check that out. Now, what I would do if I was you is I'd put them there too moist at the moment to cook. Pop them in the freezer for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they'll toughen right up. They'll be really tough and firm. Then take them out. You could just fry those, they'll be absolutely beautiful. I'll see you when that comes out of the oven. Okay, that is straight out of the oven, so it's really, really hot. What you need to do now is let that sit, just for like sort of 10 or 15 minutes. Just let it kind of cool down a little bit, and it will kind of bring it together. It, as you can see, it's crunchy on top but if I press it I can feel that it's got a lot of moisture in it which is what you want you don't want it to be a biscuit you know you really don't want that you want to enjoy this so it's nice and moist but let it just sit down now for I say a few minutes 10-15 minutes and it'll be great absolutely great maybe serve that with a bit of kind of tomato kind of pastry type sauce on the top which is what I'm gonna do that's it for that one but hang on I just want to show you something else yeah, I just wanted to show you this, with that balance that we had, you know, we had some extra left over from that. I've made some like, kind of little balls there, so you could use them like, as a kind of alternative to a kind of falafel or a kind of meatball kind of thing. You put some pasta sauce on them, and you have done some little kind of burgers, you know. Like I say, just moulded them into whatever shape you like, stick them in the freezer just for about 20 minutes, they'll kind of firm up, and off they go. That's about it, I hope you enjoy that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, we'll see you soon, lots of love.